Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Isn't God good? I love the children. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little munchkins of the world. <laughs> Amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Man, oh man, oh man. All right, next Sunday night, is we're changing our schedule around a little bit. Next Sunday night is going to be our Holy Ghost service in the, for the month of February. Then we'll keep the testimony service at the fourth Sunday like usual. Also, we've got uh, the thing coming up on the 8th. I was told it should have been on the 1st, but it's going to be on the 8th <laughs> because that's uh, kind of how we have set up now. But on the 8th for the members, so forth and all that. But Brother Bob is going to be preaching for us next Sunday night. And I think he's ready. Brother, are you ready? Oh, he, was re he was ready right now. I'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to preach. But anyway, no, no, I'm not sorry. But anyway, the thing of it is, is yeah, so that'll be that. And then we're going to have different ones of you. It'll be Josh and Jenny's turn again sometime soon. And Brother brother Gary's doing a great job on Wednesday night. Isn't that right, Leon? Amen. Yes, amen. Yeah, he's doing a great job on Wednesday night. We appreciate everybody that comes and participates in our Wednesday night Bible study. And we're having a good time. It's good to discussion and fellowship, isn't it, everybody? Those of you that are there, you enjoy it. You go away refreshed. Yes, yes amen. Changed my life. <laughs> amen. Well, we're going to be going to the 15th chapter of the book of John today. John 15. John 15. How many of you know it's all right that uh, you got to go to the Word of God? Amen. It's one thing to just get up and say, well, I got something I wanted to talk about. Well, is it what God wants you to talk about, and is it, in, is it from the Bible? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I pray so, amen, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God is good, God is good, God is good. Hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Yep, we are a people of the Bible, aren't we? Uh, we are a people of the Bible. Amen. Well, you can see up there on the screen, if you'll show the folks that for just a minute, Brother Josh. Uh, I am the vine and you are the branches. And on the left side, the left corner, you see a, a group of uh, grapes, uh, clusters of grapes. Anybody ever have a grapevine, a grape arbor in your backyard growing up? Yeah, when I was a kid, my grandma used to have all kinds of fruit trees and stuff in her backyard. She had a good, nice, beautiful grape arbor, and the, the bees liked it too. <laughs> and they liked it when just about the time I wanted to go out there and pick some ripe grapes, the bees said, well, no, I got here first. <laughs> but anyway, I, we got some anyway, and it was good. It was wonderful and lovely. Praise the Lord. And, you know, we serve uh, fruit of the vine, grape juice here on communion on the first Sunday of the month. But I've also... I like to buy that big, tall thing of Welch's uh, grape juice, the, um, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, that particular kind of grape. Uh, what is it? Yeah, it's Welch's grape juice, but there's a certain kind of grape. But Concord, there you go. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So I'll take a drink of that sometimes with my breakfast in the morning. And, uh, but it's, it's just beautiful. I love the taste of it. so refreshing. I want to talk to you today. Don't forget the calendars are on the back table. I want to talk to you today about staying connected to Jesus. There's some people, I, I'm not even going to say it, but, but where are the? you got to stay connected to Jesus. And one of the ways you stay connected to Jesus is stay connected to your local church, amen? Because we are... We help each other connect with the Lord. Amen. You might say, well, I don't, I don't need that. I can be saved. I know Jesus. But the truth of it is, is he, he engineered it that way, didn't he? That we are family and we're a body and we help each other, right? Get close to the Lord and stay hooked up with Jesus. I know this, that sometimes when people kind of lay out, they begin to drift away. They begin to drift away. And they're not as close to God as they used to be. And one of the signs of, uh, to me, 
and I've heard pastors say this, of, of, of backsliding is church is not as important as it used to be, you know, and, uh, it's, and you, you know, it's not a matter of trying to find a basis to judge people on. It's just a matter of saying, you know, when you really have a passion for God and for him and for his word, then you have a passion for his house and, and for fellowship with his people. So I want to just say thank you for all of you that are here today. We love you all, and we're so happy to see you here today. And uh, if somebody's watching us on Facebook, and if you're physically able, it ought, you ought to find a way to get into a local church. I know some folks are staying home because they're sick or they're, uh, they're homebound, whatever. But if you're uh, young enough and, and healthy enough to be able, you should be in church on a Sunday morning. Uh, and, and not because it's the law. It's not that. It's not like either that or we don't think you're good or you're second-class Christian or nothing. It's not that no, I can't. It's just saying it's better for you. It's better for me when I'm with you, right? If, if I didn't see you for a few weeks, I'd be missing something out of my life. I would, you know, and when I see you, I come there and see your smiling faces and you're sitting there and you're loving God and you've got your Bibles open and you've got your hands lifted and you're worshiping Jesus, amen? amen? You bless me and I need that. If I was just to go away for a few weeks and just not show up and, you know, and, and I would say, man, I'm sure missing something, right? So we need each other. We need that fellowship. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. But it says here, I am the vine and you're the branches. All right, I guess you still have that or you don't. I'm not sure if you do. But it says in John 15, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. And I don't know anybody here if you like prunes or not, but <laughs> if you're in the body of Christ, you're going to become acquainted with pruning. <laughs> uh, that it may bear more fruit. So... Well, I guess I'll come back to that in a bit. You are already clean or pruned because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So this, friends, he's talking about the importance of the connection, right? We got to stay connected. That's why we... The other Saturday, we went out. Some of us went out and had breakfast together. And different times, we'll meet for a meal and do different things. And and we have fellowships sometimes down in the fellowship hall, or we have. That's one reason why on Wednesday night we have our Bible study down in the fellowship hall, so we can have coffee and sometimes a little dessert and stuff like that. So that in in our teaching of the Word of God, we also have a a personal connection with each other, right? And that that makes us stronger. Because there's no, no man is an island, and people that are disconnected and, th and I say, well, I've got my thing going on with me and God, I don't need the rest of you. That's kind of a, kind of a dangerous way to look at things, because I know this, that uh, we kind of keep each other on track a little bit, don't we? Right? You ever felt like getting together with brothers and sisters in Christ helps keep you on track a little bit? Maybe you, you've had a hot, tough time and you got discouraged and it was like, and I just kind of almost felt like quitting. I almost felt like giving up. You know, I almost felt like, well, is this thing really working with me and God? And then you showed up to church the next service, and everybody gave you all that love. And the presence of God was strong. And you said, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. I'm going on for Jesus, right? Right? And so that's why we need each other and why we need the house of the Lord and why we need fellowship with each other. But he, Jesus says he's the true vine. And... Father's the vine dresser or the husbandman. And he talks about branches got to bear fruit. How many of you believe it's all right for God to look for a return on his investment, right? That if God put his spirit in you, his life in you, his word in you, he, he forgave you and he, he's lining you up for a home in heaven someday. How many of you think that it's all right if we give him something back for all that, right? No, God, I don't want to do nothing for you. I'm not going to step up and be involved or participate. I just want you to take me to heaven someday. In the meantime, don't bother me. What? What? No, no. God, bother me all you want. I belong to you. <laughs> and decide this no bother anyhow. Because I belong to you. And you love me. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And But it says here that uh, uh, if you don't bear fruit, he's going to... You're going to 
you're kind of separating yourself, but if you do bear fruit, he's going to work on you anyhow to make you bear more fruit. So, Lord, and I'm good, you're going to still work on me anyhow, and yeah, to make you better, right? So, next one, please. Hallelujah. Next one, please. There you go. Okay. Jesus says, I am, I am, I am. He said, I am the true vine. Well, there's a lot of times Jesus said, I am in the, in the Bible, right? He said, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. I am the great shepherd. He said, I am the door. He said, I am the, the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, before Abraham was, I am. I am the light of the world. So he says, I am. Friends, uh, what he is is all we need. And what he is, if we understand who he says I am, there's a few things that are implied in that. First of all, that he's self-existent. He doesn't have to have you and me to complete him, right? The other thing is he's the eternal one, and he is the source of all life and all creation. The I am. You know, what better thing could he call himself when Moses said, God, what is your name, and what shall I tell Pharaoh who, who, who sent me? And he says, I am that I am. Tell them that I am has sent you. <laughs> and, uh, and what that means is, you know, uh, I am what? I'm everything we need. You know, fill in the blank. Everything good and everything we need. Nothing bad. Everything in every way and, and everything we'll ever need and everything that, that, that somebody ought to be for, another, for, for us to feel like he's worthy of worship and praise the I am. Friends, I just wish that just for a second, God would pull back uh, uh, the, the, the heavens and let us look up there and see him on his throne right now just for a second. You see him in his glory. Oh, I see you in your glory, oh God, mighty God. And there at the right hand of the Father is the Savior, the Son of God, Jesus, amen. Holy angels, streets of gold, gates of pearl, amen. Hallelujah, the glory of God, the light of God. The Bible says that the, the Lamb of God will be the light of that city, amen. In him is no shadow of turning, no darkness at all, amen. You know, in heaven, there's not gonna be any shadows, there won't be any shadows because everything is permeated with his light. His light will be everywhere. You're not going to look down and see your shadow. Me and my shadow. <laughs> All alone and feeling blue. What? Wait a minute. No, none of that. Amen. I don't have no shadow in heaven. I'm not going to have one. Guess what? Because the light is all around me and you. Amen. Hallelujah. The light and the love of God, the life of God, light and life. Light and life and love. Light and life and love will just fill every, every, every square centimeter of heaven. I mean, it'll just be in every air, all the air that you breathe. It'll be in everything around you. It'll be nothing. Can you think about it? But the very best day you've ever had, even maybe it was as a kid, when it was your day at the park, it was your day at Disney, it was your day at, uh, of bliss, just going doing the funnest, most fun thing you could do as a kid. And it was one of those carefree days when everything seemed great and wonderful. Ever, right? Ever had one of those days? You don't have them all the time, but I remember as a kid, and you know, when you get to heaven, it's going to be just like that, only better. You're not going to have a sour thought or a bitter memory. You're not going to have an ache or pain. It's going to be so wonderful. But friends, you got to stay attached to the vine. Jesus said, I am the true vine. And friends, the true vine. There might be fake ones out there. There's no replacement for Jesus. He is the true vine. And what is the vine? You think about it. He says, I am the vine. You are the branches. So when he's the one that's hooked into the, the source of nutrition and all that, and then we got to be attached to him to have life. Friends, if you don't stay closely attached to Jesus... By being a person of prayer and reading your Bible and fellowshipping with the saints. If you don't stay closely attached to Jesus, you're going to find that the world will drain the life out of you. Drain the life out of you. Just empty you out. And that's why in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, you find them getting filled with the Holy Ghost more than once. The day of Pentecost and then refilled later on. Guess what? Because you're... It, it, it's impossible for you to go through a day in this life without life trying to take a little something out of you, isn't it? And so that's why you got to go back to him and get refilled, amen, fill up with him again. 
He says, I am the true vine. No replacement will work. I am your root system. I am your strength and stability. Rooted and grounded in love. The Bible talks about rooted and grounded in love. I'm your root system, your strength and stability. But if you detach from that, from that, you die. Detach from, is anybody, every couple of you too cold here this morning? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Anybody? I could bump it up one if you want me to. Everybody need, anybody? Need me to bump it up a bit? Okay, all right. Hallelujah. I'm your root system, your strength and stability. He says, I am your life. When he's the vine and we are branches, it's, it amounts to this. He is our root system. He is our life, your nourishment and supply. He's the supply line. You know how every plant of a tree gets its nourishment up out of the ground and the, the roots help manufacture the food for the, for the tree, uh, the nourishment of what's going on down there. And, of course, they, they, they have the lights, the light shining on the leaves. Amen. I'm going to bump it up one. I think some of you got cold here. I'm gonna, but uh, but when the trees are out there in the spring and summer, and they have their leaves, green leaves out there, they're taking advantage of the light, and they're soaking up carbon dioxide, and they're taking advantage of the light, and they're sending things on down to the root system to make food to sustain the tree, especially in those months when the leaves are not on it. And friends, I need to have myself attached my, to the root system. I need to be attached to Jesus. If I do that, you know, he said that to the lady at the well, she said, if you get a drink from me, you'll never run dry. What's he saying? He's saying that, that I am your source. This well, okay, you can dip your bucket in the well, try to bring something up, and that's all right. We all need the natural water. I'm, I get thirsty by the time I'm done preaching up here on Sunday morning. But... We all need that, but we need something down on the inside of us. John chapter 7, he said, My spirit will be within you, a, a well of springing forth into everlasting life. Amen. And I need that well of Jesus in my spirit, man, springing up into a well of everlasting life. That wherever I go, the life of God is flowing and circulating, and it's on the inside of me. Amen. Keeping me alive. Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. Keeping me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, I'm your life, your nourishment, and supply. And he says, I am your purpose. What is my purpose? One of the things i got to do is to produce fruit, right? Good things, the fruit of the Spirit, I've got to show that love and that faith and that kindness and, that, and uh, the peace and the joy and uh, all the things that I need for myself but ought to overflow from me to people around me, right? If you know somebody that needs some peace, you're supposed to have a little extra to give to them. Jesus said to his disciples on the night before he knew, he knew they were going to haul him away and lie about him, and put him on trial, and beat him up, and eventually crucify him. The night before all that happened, and he knew it was coming, he says, my peace I give unto you. Now as the world gives, give I unto you. So no matter what you're going through in life, friends, you ought to have enough extra peace that you still got more than what you need, so you can give it away. Amen? Amen. Friends, you can be strong. You can be all sufficient in him. Amen? God, take care of you. Thank you, God, that I'm strong enough. I can do it. I can do it. I can make it in Jesus' name because God lives on the inside of me, right? And so he said, I am your vine. I am your location. Friends, the, the branches had nothing to do with where the, the roots got planted. They're just wherever that system is. You know, there's trees across the road, up and down the road. They're, you're finding they're going to be planting some corn here in a couple of months and the soybeans and all of that stuff. People have got grape arbors, and there's some of those up and down the highway. The, the branch had nothing to do with where it was planted. It just had to grow with whatever it was attached to. So God is deciding your location. Thank God that he decided some of you ought to be located here, <laughs> that you, this body, ought to be located with us. And we're attached to each other, helping each other bear fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go ahead, brother. So Jesus is the, the true vine, and he says, my father is the vine dresser. In the King James, I believe it says the husbandman. Here, he's the farmer. He's the one that tends the vine. He's the one that decides, as I said a minute ago, where you're planted. 
So thank God I'm planted here. Been here for a few years, me and Linda. And we're glad for those of you who are planted here. And we're going to believe God's going to plant some more folks right here. Go out. We might as well just go out and get a tiller and go up and dig up the yard because God's going to do some planting here. Right? <laughs> now, I don't know. Don't run a, don't need to run a tiller up and down the, <laughs> the carpet in here. I'm, it's a, I'm talking about a figurative sense, friends, that we ought to say, Lord, we're doing some tilling. We're going to break up this, the, fallow, the shallow, the fallow ground. And God plow it up. God plow it up. God plow it up and plant some seed. And he says, go out and plant the seed, the seed, parable of the sower, that God will give us seed to sow, amen. And we want to do that. We want to witness to people. We're sending out our newsletter. We're going to send out another one at, at the end of February uh, for March and April. We got some uh, re response to the ones we sent out, and we're going to make a, a, I'm personally going to do another follow-up on that. But we're going to believe that God's going to help us through many ways, and we're praying in youth workers. We're praying all that in, in Jesus' name. And we're praying that God will use all of us. We're praying that you will be faithful to this house so that you know. When you're here, folks, folks that only kind of plug in a little bit don't know that if you really plugged in all the way in this, this house, you might turn into just some great vessel for God, bringing forth a lot of fruit and seeing a lot of great things happen. Brother... Brother Bob's going to talk to us here in, in a short time, a few, next few weeks sometime, about some things and, and, and getting that and doing some things out on the, out there in the, uh, over there at the, the, um, what do you call it? Convention yeah. <laughs> no, it's not a convention center, but not a little bit. Anyhow, community center, the stage out in front of that. We're going to do some outdoor things. I'm going to reach out to people. And we're going to be doing that as the weather gets where we're able to do it. But friends, we are going to do stuff. Amen. And you're invited to help us do stuff. Amen. Because that stuff is, that we're going to do is led by him, anointed and appointed by him. And it's going to bear fruit because God says so. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you would say that, hey, I'm excited about what Church on the Hill is going to do this year. And I want to be a part of it. Can anybody say that? Amen. Amen. So God is the vine dresser. He's the one that decides to, to, to fertilize us and to irrigate us and to water us and to uh, snip, 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 prune us. <laughs> he, he's our food supply established. He decides when and how much you're going to get pruned. Uh, oh, Lord, are you pruning me again? <laughs> Anybody ever feel like that, that God's got kind of working on you and say, oh, well, Lord, I know I need to do some work, but does it all have to happen on the same day? Or it's a, you know, quit cutting over there. I need a little trim over here. That's starting to hurt. <laughs> you know, we, we, Lord, work on me. Work on me. Have your way. But it's God's the one, the Father. He's the husbandman. He is the vine dresser. He's the one to determine when and how much we are pruned. You know, will you, has anybody here ever had to prune a tree, a fruit tree? Brother's going to come over here and help us to try to save the life of one of our ornamentals in our front yard. And uh, that might, it needs some help if it's going to make it. But, uh, but if you've ever done that, I, we watched a Montana Haven thing on, you, on, uh, on YouTube. It's an ex-Amish family that they're just sweet, wonderful, godly people. And they show you all the stuff they do in their home in Montana. And recently they moved up to Alaska and built a cabin up there. For, I'm going to stay there for a couple of years. Anyhow, when they were doing their gardening the last couple of years, they'd show you how they pruned this off and cut this off and took part of that away and part of that away. And because they did that, it wasn't... Any, anybody ever heard the term sucker shoots? Yep. You got a tomato plant and some stuff is growing off to the side and it's not going to ever produce anything. You know it's never going to have a bud on it. But all it's doing is draining life from the plant. So you got to cut that off, Right. Amen. And so sometimes God will cut some things off of you and me that are just making us not fruitful for him, draining the life out of us. Amen. Using up what God's put in us for no good purpose. So, Lord, all right, here I am. You ever sit in the barber chair? And they put the towel, they, especially the guys, they put the, that little apron thing over you, and, and you, you want to get a cut, but you think, uh, are they cutting too much? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want some hair left, <laughs> you know. And so, so we said, God, do what you want. I trust you, amen. And when he takes care of us that way, it's going to all turn out better for our good and for his glory, amen. But he's the one that will fertilize you. When he fertilizes you, that's feeding you the word. 
We eat the word of God. We eat the Bible verses that we read. That's nourishment to our soul. He's going to irrigate you. That means he's going to give you Holy Spirit flow in your life. You know, the water, uh, but the water, water of the washing of the word, it says, but also the flow of that water, the holy water of God, the Holy Spirit of God. He's, he's the one that will fertilize you. He'll feed you. He's the one that will water and irrigate you, feed you the Holy Spirit presence. Amen. Amen. And he's the one that will... Snip, snip, snip. <laughs> Lord, please, that's enough. <laughs> he said, I know. I'll tell you when it's enough. <laughs> and, but uh, so we are his property, right? And we belong to him. And trusting God is a tough thing sometimes, but you just have to say, Lord, I know you know what you're doing. Anybody have to come to that conclusion sometime? God, I know that you know what you're doing. And even if it's not comfortable, or even sometimes I would do to, to do the total opposite, I'm going to just yield because you know what's best and it'll end up better than anything I could come up with. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Next, please. Our purpose, so Jesus is the vine, the Father is the husbandman, and our purpose as branches is to bear fruit. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And I don't know, I'm not going to get into... Oh, once saved, always saved, debate about things like that. I just want to say this. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. So you can say, I'm doing something good, and I'm still getting pruned anyhow. <laughs> I'm bearing some fruit I'm trying to do right, and I still get pruned anyway. Well, that's because you don't know your potential. You don't know your great potential, and God does. And he says, if you submit to his process, you can pr produce more fruit than you ever guessed, more than you ever imagined. Amen? Come on, some of us that are sitting in this, in this room, think of ourselves as just sort of ordinary people that can't do a lot, don't have a, a lot of maybe giftings or a lot of potential to do big stuff. You just don't know. You don't know. You could really be a life changer and a world changer for somebody. Amen? Amen. Everybody's sitting in here. There's nobody here in this room today that can't possibly have a great potential to be used of God in great ways, but you got to see it. you got to hunger for it. you got to seek him for it. Say, God, use me. God, fix me. God, change me. God, use me. Right? Amen. And if you'll do that, now there's a, a, a thing called uh, uh, a dissatisfaction. Um, what's the, the phrase I'm trying to think of? Uh, and some kind of internal restlessness. Uh, a restlessness that says there's got to be more. Well, that you can still be happy. That doesn't mean you can't have any satisfaction in life, but I still think there's more. Anybody think there's more? Amen. Anybody here feel like, I'm all I can be? I don't need to learn anything new. I know everything there is for me to know. And I'm doing, that. I'm doing up 100% of my full potential. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Believe me. Some of us have been following Jesus for decades, and we're still stumbling over the fact that, well, I guess I should have learned that 20 years ago, but I'm just now learning it, but okay, teach me Jesus. <laughs> Amen. He said, every branch of me, so we got a, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that'll bear more fruit. I want God to get all he can get out of me. Amen. I want Jesus who hung on that cross and died on that cross, who bled on that cross, who was bloody and, and didn't even look human. He suffered so much. I want him to get his full return on his investment in me. Right? It's, and then he goes, verse 3 says, Now you're already clean through the word which I have spoken to you. That also talk, means you're already pruned. In other words, the one of the ways that God will clean you up and pull off the extra stuff that's just the sucker shoots in your life is for you to keep opening your Bible and let the Bible talk to you. Come here and let, let the pastor and, and the teachers teach and preach to you the Word of God. And in your own devotional life, read your Bible. And in that, God will talk to you. Everybody, anybody ever had the Lord convict you when you're reading the Bible? You didn't sit down to get conviction, but when you open your Bible, you got some conviction. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, Lord. Sometimes, there have been a few times in my life that I was reading about one thing, and God talked to me just because my heart at that moment was open and receptive, and I was hungering to know more of his word. He was able then to talk to me because I was open. But he talked to me about something that wasn't in the passage I was reading. He was talking to me about something else I needed to get fixed. 
But the fact that I came to his word with an open heart, open mind, allowed him the freedom to talk to me. And God will do that. He'll, if you get the freedom and the opportunity to talk to you by coming into his word, amen. Hallelujah. Give me a... That's all right. We'll do it. Well, we're good. We're good. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, brothers. Just let's just just relax and enjoy. It's all right. I'll just use this. Todd was singing with us a little bit this morning, and this was don't worry about it. Just we're good. But thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um so <laughs> Facebook. Hi friends. <laughs> He said, you're already, I, I've quoted that verse to myself a few times. Well, here comes the man. Here comes the, the servant of God. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. But evangelist Todd. Amen. Here comes the blessing. But anyway, so I've quoted this verse a few times, uh, many times to myself, uh, John 15, 3. Now you are clean through the word which I've spoken to you. It goes along in my mind with John 17, 17, where he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You know, that the more I read the word, and then I say, Lord, I'm going to let you clean me up by me taking a bath in the word. I'm going to bathe my spirit and my mind in the word of God and hear what God's got to say. You're already clean or pruned through the word which I've spoken to you. So it doesn't always take scissors. Sometimes it just takes some time with your Bible open. <laughs> You don't, oh, you don't always have to bleed to get pruned. <laughs> but but uh, anyway, what is that for? Next, please. Uh, conditions for fruit bearing. Amen. Conditions for fruit bearing. Oh, yeah. Get that right on. What are some conditions for fruit bearing? He said, abide in me and I in you. So here's the thing. I'm going to stay put in Jesus. I'm going to stay connected to Jesus. And then let Jesus live on the inside of me. I'm in him and he's in me. I'm attached to him, attached to his church and his body. I'm attached to his word. I'm attached to him and I'm attached to him and he's living on the inside of me. He said, abide in me and I in you. And that's what, that's what it's going to take for us to produce fruit. You got to stay close to God. You got to stay full of God. Amen. It's close to Jesus. Stay full of Jesus. It says, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you ab abide in me. Think about this, friends. God's called you. God's gifted you. God's anointed you. And because there's an anointing on your life and a touch of God on your life, yeah, sometimes we'll get a little careless and think, well, uh, I remember the last time I stood up and preached the word of God, and God really touched me, God anointed me, God blessed me. And you begin to think, well, I don't need to pray so much. I don't, I don't need to stay, I don't know where, where as much of it, because I know how to get up and do it. If, let me just tell you what. <laughs> the last time God used you in a great way doesn't mean he's going to do it the next time if you don't stay close to him. Oh, amen. amen. The last time you got up and God just flowed through you, the spirit of God flowed through you, and Jesus manifested himself through your words and through your ministry and through your witness to your friends and neighbors. The last time he did that doesn't guarantee that it'll happen again if you don't stay close to him. Amen. I want to stay close to the source. I want to stay plugged in. I'm going to stay close to Jesus. Conditions of fruit bearing. I'm going to abide in him. I'm going to stay with Jesus. I'm going to stay with his people. I'm going to stay in his church. I'm going to stay attached to his body. Amen. I'm going to stay here with you. Be part of each other in this thing that we're doing to, to, to perform the will of God and bear fruit and win our community to Jesus. Amen. It says that the branch cannot bear fruit and thus you can't bear fruit unless you abide in me. So I'm going to stay attached to him so I can keep on producing something. Next verse, verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. By now, I think we should know that. He's the source. He's life. He's our locator. He's, he's the, the purpose, my purpose. And he says, he's the branch. I'm the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. What does the word mean to abide? It means to stay, to live, to dwell. I'm going to stay in Jesus. I'm going to live in Jesus. I'm going to dwell in Jesus. And one of the ways you're going to dwell in Jesus is dwelling in his written word. Amen. 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 Because, you know, the Bible says, 
that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that's Jesus. And the Word came and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And He was the Word that was used to create all things, right? John chapter 1, read that sometime. And so because of all of that, we know, amen, hallelujah, that the Word of God, if we'll keep on staying and reading the Word of God. Well, pastor, I get bored. You know, I read the Bible. Every time I get my Bible open, I fall asleep. <laughs> well, get up and walk around and read your Bible. <laughs> when I was a young man going to Bible college, listen, I had to work 40 hours plus a week and be in school in classrooms 15 to 18 hours a week. Uh, about 20 hours a week. So I was doing about 60 hours. So then when I went home, I didn't get just to relax. I had to do, say, stay up half the night and do homework a lot of nights. And I sat in the bathroom while my wife and baby little boy were in bed asleep so I could do my homework and fill out my notebook assignments and all the things I had to do for that. And, and in that, I knew that I had to stay attached to him if I was going to make it. Amen. Praise God. But abiding means staying and in with him, making the effort, making the effort. Anybody ever had a time when you felt, I'm going to bring this up to you. There's times you sat to read your Bible and it just came alive as you read it, right? Other times you read your Bible and you thought, well, it's not quite the same as last time, but, but I'm supposed to do it, so I'm going to read my Bible, <laughs> right? Well, I should, so I'm going to, even I don't, even if it's not as exciting as the last time. That's why you don't just come to church when it's all exciting and we're running up and down the aisles. Although a little of that's okay. Uh, but you come to church because it's the, the duty that you do as a member of the body of Christ and in doing duty and doing your responsibility and duty, you get really blessed. It's not a dry, dull duty of, oh, I have to go to church. But, <laughs> but when you do come, when you do come, even if it's out of duty sometimes. You ever had a Sunday morning you didn't feel like it really, you felt maybe didn't feel like under the weather a little bit, and you thought, well, should I stay home? You thought, no, I'm going to church. You overcame that feeling of being under, under the weather a little bit, said, no, I'm going to go to church. And when you were all done, you said, man, I'm so glad I went, right? Right? So we just got to muscle through, push through, and let do our duty. And in, a, in the doing of our duty to Him, amen, He'll bless you back so many times. Amen. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. It says, I'm divine, you're the branches. If you'll be abiding me, you'll bear much fruit. So the abiding means I'm going to stay attached. I'm going to stay in the Word. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to be in church. I'm going to do all the things that it means to stay attached to Him. All right, next please. Fringe benefits of abiding. If you say, I'm staying attached to Jesus and he's going to stay, I'm going to keep him, let him be in me and I'm going to be in him. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, here's some of the benefits. You can ask what you desire and it will be done for you. If the word of God is living in you, then your prayer life is going to be more potent, more powerful and more fruitful. Amen. Amen. He says, uh, I, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then you can have a powerful prayer life. He'll ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Oh, are you kidding me, Pastor? Really? We can just ask any old thing we want. No, you can't just ask any old thing you want. You can ask what you want if His Word is abiding in you. And His Word will guide you as to what you really should want. Amen? And it will mold your desires and cause you to want the right things. and cause you to realize that secondary things are... Uh, contraband, just let it go, leave it, leave it behind, and you'll, you'll start to really want the right things, and when you pray, you're gonna get your prayers answered, amen? That's alright if he changes and, and molds my desires, amen. So, so if we abide in him, our prayer is answered. What's the next thing? It said, by this my, my father is glorified. So the more, uh, fringe benefits of abiding in him, we can have a prayer life that's powerful and we get the results. And number two, God will be glorified in it because, uh, because we'll be bearing much fruit and it will glorify God. And what's the next thing? In verse 15, it says, no longer do I call you servants for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard from my father, I've made known to you. So here we go. If we abide in him, what's some of the fringe benefits? I get my prayers answered because I'm praying the right kind of prayer. Number two, God gets glory because I'm bearing fruit. Number three, I get to be a friend of God, not just a servant. And one of the things he says about the servants, he says a servant doesn't know what his master's doing, but a friend does. 
In other words, you get the inside information. You get to know the heart and mind of God and get, get, get to where you kind of know where he's going next because you study the heart and mind of God. And his heart and mind are filling you up. Amen. Praise God. So fringe benefits of all of that. Answered prayer. God gets glory because you're much fruit. And you can say, I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Amen. Next, please. What is the fruit? We talked about bearing fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. You know, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, patience, temperance, all these things, you know, that are fruit of the Spirit. What is that fruit that we need to bear? It says, if we abide in Him, we'll bear fruit. What is that? It's the fruit of the Spirit. Also, it's the harvest of souls. If you have a heart for God, you're going to have a heart for souls. Amen? If you really love Jesus, you're going to love the people He died for. Amen? Right? If you really love him and honor him and appreciate all he's done for you, you're going to want to plug into that and bring him some reward, the reward of, uh, of his investment in your life. So the harvest of souls, what's the fruit? Fruit of the Spirit. In other words, the evidence of the Spirit of God, Jesus living in you, it's a harvest of souls. And Ephesians 4 talks about another part of the fruit that he's looking for is for us to grow up into the image of Christ. That would be more and more like Jesus. Now, friends, I'm saying a lot to you this morning that I could stop on any one of these points and spend 20 minutes. But So I hope that you'll kind of grasp some of the things on the way by. And maybe later on it'll stir up a hunger in you and you'll go open your Bible and make more of what, you know, because whenever I've, any of the points I've made to you so far in this message, you could spend an hour on each one of them. Uh, but we don't have time to do that. So what I'm trying to say to you is that there's a lot to this message, and I hope that your heart will hear, hear even more than your head can hear. That you'll grasp it and you'll go after it. Amen. Next one, please. You were his choice. That last verse that we're going to look at in this chapter, he says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. Huh? He said... He said, you, is this what, he said, this wasn't your idea, this was my idea. He's, he's talking. You, you little geniuses didn't come up with this concept, it was my idea. <laughs> I'm the one that created everything, and when I knew that you were going to fall in sin, I made a way for you to get reconciled with me so we could be friends again. And then I made a way whereby if you'll let me work in your life, I'll use you for great purposes. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You were his choice. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. I believe King James says ordained you. I think it does. But So you're all ordained. <laughs> and how many ordained ministers do we have anywhere? That's everybody if you're full of Jesus uh, in, you know, in certain ways. But you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed or ordained you that you should go. Go. No, just go. And then bear fruit. And you should go. In other words, in our going, we're all going somewhere, right? You're going to go to the store. You're going to go visit family. You're going to go somewhere. In all your going, when you get in that car and put that thing on the road and go somewhere, you need to say, wherever I'm going, I'm going to be a light. Wherever I'm going, I'm going to be a witness. Wherever I'm going, I'm going to connect somebody with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Even if you're just going out to pick up a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread, you can go help connect somebody with Jesus when you're doing that. Amen. Amen. Uh, sometimes I disappoint myself that I don't say as much as I could say and thought about it later. Uh, other times I feel like we tried to do our very best to bring up Jesus, help people to know about the Lord when they weren't, ex and when they least expected it, they had a God encounter <laughs> because God went with me. And I, and, and He'll, when they're least expecting it, you ought to be a God encounter for a lot of those people out there. Amen. Amen. So he says here, yeah, well, we're all working on you. That your fruit should remain. Uh, so look at this. I'm going to read the verse one more time, then we're done. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed and ordained you that you should go. And when you go, you should bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. So you'll have a fruitful, powerful prayer life. So if you look at this passage here, and, and again, there's so many things you could spend a lot of time on, but I'm, I've already talked long enough today. But in this, John 15, no fruit. Some fruit. Ruin you for more fruit. You abide and it's much fruit. And it's fruit that remains. 
No fruit, fruit, more fruit, much fruit, fruit that remains. By progressively getting attached to him and letting his life fill us up. Let's, st let's stand together right now and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, Lord Jesus, we want you, we want to stay abiding in the vine. We're going to stay attached to Jesus, amen, attached to his word, attached to his house, attached to the fellowship of the saints in this church. We're going to stay attached to God in Jesus' name. We're going to live according to your purpose and give you the glory, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And if anybody's not watching me that's not in the church somewhere, you need to find one, go there. Be there on Sunday morning. If you're physically able, you should be there. Hallelujah. God will bless you. God will help you. Praise God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How many of you want to be soul winners for Jesus? Amen. How many of you want to have your life impact other people to turn their eyes and their heart toward God? Amen? Amen. All of us, right? All of us. So I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, anoint and bless and help our people, Lord God. Let every single one of them have a desire for you. Let them abide in the vine and stay full of God and stay full of the word. Live in them, Jesus, as they live in you. Hallelujah. And bear fruit, Lord. I'm going to see that our people are going to have this quickened in them that they're going to want to go out and do the week and they're going to witness and invite and all of a sudden they're going to start bringing a friend with them to church on Sunday morning or have a friend meet them here. And that's, Lord, I'm believing that, I'm trusting that. I need young people, children, teenagers, youth, God, in the name of Jesus, pulling them in, pulling them in, pull them in, pull them in, God, in Jesus' name. Some of us got family members, Lord, that seem so hard-headed, they seem like they'll never listen, but we're just claiming their soul right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, for eternity, and we praise you and thank you, God, for sending somebody their way and letting us also be more effective in our witness. And we praise you, God, and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Anybody today say, I, Pastor, I need some prayer right now. I've had a, a difficult week. I need some time, some, some, somebody to pray with me. I need somebody to ask God to bless me. I ask God to help me. Anybody here need a healing touch in your body today? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen.